All right, so we're <laughs> we're back, and I suppose I, I suppose we should get this uh, last part on the road here. This is the campaign concept if you want to run something like a bunch of skirmishes or a campaign in this theme. I used Valkyria Chronicles as an example because I think it fits the style of the combat, the situations, and the overarching goals. Pardon. And not just in presentation, but in the extra bonuses that could be included. If you recall the dungeon, the outdoor dungeon we made last night, this is going to be an expanded version of that. And it is going to pull together a lot of the different aspects that we have had for the party, for, uh, for, uh, for the dungeon, for just the map that we've made itself. It will draw on all of it and bind it together and I think do a very good job at presenting itself as a solid idea. Um, Plunder loot, yeah, Ivalon's head is, would explode because of Chemisen's find. Um, ominous lighting plus guard gnome equals guardian gnome. <laughs> is uh, so uh, Lamington is that a uh, is that a good or a bad thing? Are, are you afraid of this uh, garden gnome? This uh, guardian gnome? Jake says my team started losing the series tonight because of mistakes that were coached out of me by the time I was eleven. It made me furious. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, mage. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you hope that you make it muscle memory at a certain point in time so you don't have to think about it. But, hey, given circumstances, mistakes still can come up. And I'm sorry it caused you a sore throat, Jake, that you're you're screaming at your TV there, but uh, such is the passion <laughs> that uh, sports ball fans have for their sports balls. I say that with all due respect. I know that you enjoy the things you do. I'm not trying to demean that, Jake. I get up and scream about different things. Lomington, it really depends on the secret the gnome is guarding. Paired with the Borg, it does make me nervous. Well, you see, Lomington... Whoa, Derek! Dude, thank you! And if you look... Oh, look at that sweet little face up there. He's just smiling at all of us. This is your new stream boss now. <laughs> that means a lot, man. Thank you very much. Um, and Lomington, look, you know that rock gnomes, like, do all tinkering and whatever? Well, it just means that the Borg were created by rock gnomes, and it'll eventually get to the point where, instead of making little tinker toys, they'll make cybernetic replacements for body parts, and then it's just gonna go from there. That's my actual face, says Derek. And Del Corin is throwing in a non-committal one. <laughs> First blood! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all are something else. Uh, Bubonic says, lol, like I said last night, Derek, uh, maybe the stream boss, but I'm the king of the hill here. <laughs> oh, and he's flexing, too. <laughs> Del Corn, thank you for your non-committal one, and Derek, thank you for uh, taking over stream boss uh, with your bits. Uh, I, I appreciate that, brother. Dark Wolf is getting new head cannon now. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's explore the campaign a little bit now. As I do, I'm this is an outline. If you have ideas, or you would run a particular section in another way, or you want to reference this to something in particular, let me know. I don't mind adding to this document or considering other options. This is a discussion point for all of us. So, uh, I, just as you do with the dungeon, right? You have an ultimate goal. What do you want to have happen with your campaign? A secret of the world is revealed. You have an idea for a grand, you know, Harry Potter versus uh, Slytherin or uh, versus... Um, why am I derping on the name? Shame on me. Uh, not Severus. Come on. Voldemort. Voldemort. A big Harry Potter versus Voldemort showdown. You want to have um, a big, explosive Death Star finale, something like that? What do you want to do with the campaign? If you 
theme it around a central point, it's very easy, no matter how much you may wiggle back and forth, you can still advance towards that goal. It, it's it, If you keep it simple, it's very easy. Or it's like reeling in a fish, right? Your party is this fish, and you want to reel him, reel him, reel him, reel him, reel him in. Yes, he who must not be named. Mr. Plunderloot, thank you for the 20 bits. You know who? What are you talking about, my boy Tom Riddle? Come on now. S-Wild is at a local store. They had a copy of that new uh, hardback remake of B1 slash B2. It's beautiful and huge. <laughs> You remember to super late, but if the person I was talking about that... Oh, so that'd be uh, Bubonic. He should still be around. Ah, yes. Tar Tom Marvolo Riddle. Maybe he wrote Volo's Guide to Everything. <laughs> Bubonic one, tell me where. All right. So I wanted to keep that, that theme in mind with all of the parts that we were doing. We want to repel the invaders, driving them back to discourage the invasion of Mesotopia. If possible, destroy the command structure while maintaining infrastructure for uses in defense or future settlements. So we've almost added a sub goal. Is it necessary? Do we have to not burn down their forts? No, we can burn down their forts. But if they built a fort and we can take over a fort, that means it's our fort as Mesotopians. S. Wild, yeah, you're very welcome to, and thank you for asking for permission. I. That means a lot to me. But go ahead. Uh, post uh, Bubonic. Like, he's got his face pressed against the window. He's like, ooh, ooh, show me. I want to see. <laughs> all right. Something I do want uh, your all's input in. What do we want to call our mercenary group? Right? We have a party of five. They're sent out as kind of privateers or mercenaries or... Um, you know, some kind of uh, private contractor, you know, think like Blackwater that we hear a lot about, um, you know, private security, something along those lines. Um, we don't have to give it a name right now, but I would love to theme, you know, to come up with a thematic name. Derek wants to call it the Cold Bridge Company. Bubonic is drooling. I'll write that up here. Uh, what, um, what, what, uh, what kind of significance does that have uh, for you, Derek? Unless uh, Bubonic was saying that the, this, the company's name should be uh, drooling. <laughs> Here we are. This is arc one. This is the introductory adventure. We are introducing our characters to the story at level eight. We've needed these eight levels of, of uh, accumulated experience in order to bring them together. And the adventure won't start until eight. So to earn level nine, as it's labeled, this is what's going to have to happen. Cold bridge, term used for backdoor politics during a cold war. Well, th this might be a warm bridge company because this isn't going to be cold for too much longer. <laughs> pardon me. Oh, pardon. It's the uh, the invisible drink. That's an interesting uh, vocabulary term. I did not know that. I spent many, many, many days in 78 to 79 clearing out the B1, B2 caves. Huh. All right, the concept here, whether you want to give it out as experience points or you want to just set a milestone. With the party together, you must prove to the Mesotopian Alliance that you are all capable of survival as well as being trustworthy. You've passed basic tests. This is now an advanced one. The structure to this milestone or this series of encounters that you'll give out EXP uh, survival skill challenge with a moral conundrum. You'll be sent out with a minimum of supplies and a map to the location. 
As DMs, decide the difficulty for level 8 characters who must have X amount of successes before Y amount of failures. If you want it really hard, you have to have a greater number of successes before a lesser number of failures. There will also be a seemingly valuable bobble in the location. If it is returned along with the still intact party, they will receive a bonus reward and greater trust. This means access to info or supplies, as the Alliance has no problem sending thieves out to die in the wilderness. Um, so what that would mean is, look, our players, whether they're new as players or experienced, they need a chance to test their characters together. This level 8 adventure to get them to level 9 will do that. It's going to test their skills and it's going to test their camaraderie, as they have to navigate out to a particular location... And while they're there, maybe they find a, uh, a deceased soldier. Um, it could even be a deceased soldier dressed in imperial clothes. And has a very valuable... Um, has something valuable on him. And it should be returned back to this camp. Because it could be... Uh, it could be intelligence. It could be, I don't know, a map or uh, something like that. This... As a DM, remember, we're wearing our DM hats right now. You're baiting a hook, and, you're, at, and you're, you're throwing it out there to see if your players will not only get to the location and survive for X amount of days, performing skills and whatnot that are necessary, but will they take the treasure for themselves, or will they return with the treasure and hand it over to this quest giver, whoever it is in this alliance? Now, all they were asked to do is survive. If they don't turn in this bauble, they'll still get a basic reward. Though they won't get extra rewards. Does, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Eswild says, Bubonic One, I read through the old B1 a while ago, and I love it because of how it's really kind of empty for most of it. Totally unexpected. I'd enjoy running that 5e with some new people, since they could just kind of wander around and have weird things happen and not a lot of sudden death. Oh, I'm glad it's good so far, Estwild. Mick Cool Man, hello. We, uh, the royal we, so the, the singular we, is doing very well today. I had an awesome day. Thank you for asking. I hope you did too, Mick Cool Man. Bubonic One, first level characters have a real problem with certain encounters in those caves, and a few are well beyond four to five level threes. Lomington Powder Keg Collective, or some other better word for the group. I'll put that up here too. <laughs> So if they do this, if they survive X amount of days, they have a skill challenge. Maybe not a combat per se, because we're going to throw that at them next. But we want to warm them up. And you can say, um, you know, talk to your characters. Where in the Mesotopia region, which is, um, like, Mesotopia proper is really, like... Like, this is kind of the political boundaries. They're going to start in Mesotopia, right? Um, will they encounter any Imperials? Probably not. You know, not unless it's that planted skeleton or whatever to test their loyalty. So if if the players show that, oh, I really like the Kandor region, or uh, so that's over here, or I really like the Fallfire Plains, or, uh, I don't know, one of them might say, oh, I played in that Lurking Legacy game in that Ooked module. And there was some cool and spooky stuff there. I want to start there. I want to go back to Ooked as a player, and I want to survive there. And, and so what you could have is you can place this survival in any of the regions of Mesotopia. And so let's say that they go back to Ooked. And... Uh, they they go out and they camp in the jungles and they train. It's uh, this is then meant to get them together, 
they're going to come back and they're either going to be trustworthy or not. And if they're not trustworthy, what is what is this quest giver NPC care? He's going to send them out on some kind of a, a mission. And if thieves die in the jungles of Ukt, oh no, I serve justice. What's going to happen? Oh, uh, Chemison. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, that is most likely a forward slash. As a, as a command. And... <laughs> Macabre Derek... May you, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, may you haunt us forevermore. <laughs> and Chemison, thank you very much for the cheer. That does mean a lot to me. Thank you. Sin sincerely. You know, you and Derek, Buddha, even Delcorn for those non-committal ones. Um, one bit, a thousand, twenty-five, a uh, hundred here. Uh, that, that is, uh, yeah, <laughs> Derek, uh, Derek gives you, uh, a, a gracious, uh, a gracious bow there. Um, thank you all very much for your subscriptions, for your cheers, uh, for your follows, and for your chat interaction, for your conversation, for playing the chat games or telling jokes or even role-playing in chat. Each of these levels of this channel well, they just, they, they, they make me so happy to be a part of something that is greater than all of us combined. Thank you, Chemison. <laughs> Derek and Delcorn can go, like, <laughs> Tink, you, you can go, uh, like, uh, raise a beer together, Delcorn and Derek. <laughs> so, congratulations, party, you have earned level 9, but you're not out of training yet. You've done your basic, and you've proven you can live in the wilds, and you cannot kill each other, and hopefully you can be honest. Um, and by the way, speaking of proof, Chemison, I will continue to prove that this channel is a great community, and it is, you know, this is something long-term, we'll have fun, we'll tell tales, and inspire. Uh, I will always do my best to earn uh, your your respect and anything else that you decide to offer along with that. So now if we're going to have our party earn level 10, a raiding party of Imperial scouts has been seen making camp by an oasis. And now I was presuming in this case, I was presuming that uh, maybe we're starting in Aslandia or in the fall fire plains because there has been a land movement of Imperial troops in from the, uh, from this direction. Ivalon, I'm mired in so much game stuff right now. <laughs> well, uh, Ivalon, if you want to be mired in a little bit more, or at least admired, um, <laughs> uh, Chemison has a tale to tell if Bubonic One doesn't uh, beat him to it. So I was I was presuming a location, but you can have this first part take place in Ukt, and even if you want to, right, give the players what they want in part one. In part two, oh, congratulations, you can survive in the wilderness. I'm going to ship you up to Aslandia because there's a command person there you need to talk to. They have a problem. So one way or the other, you can bring them to Aslandia, and they have uh, seen that there are some scouts hanging around, um, maybe just on the border, like right out here. Right out there is the, is the oasis. Uh, so this band of scouts needs to be silenced one way or the other. Um... And especially because if there's other oases in the Outlands to help the Empire invade, that information can't be allowed to get back. This is going to be... Oh, Mage, it's time for bed. Can't do too many late nights at this point. Mage, thank you for coming and hanging out. And for being a part of the conversation. And uh, I'm glad you enjoyed, like, you got to talk about Kingdom Hearts and you enjoyed references to uh, animal friendship is magic. <laughs> 
Avalon might have to put the Lost Mines aside for a bit. It requires so much more effort than my other things I have planned. Now well, prioritize. Go with what, what's keeping you busy. <clears throat> Take care, mage. So what's the structure to this? This will be a basic search and destroy mission. However, there is the ability to run this as a no-kill if the soldiers are captured and brought back. The approach will be dangerous because of the high visibility on the dunes even at night and the relatively flat terrain. There is a chance for random encounters to supplement the difficult boss fight in the camp. Returning with proof of the destruction will be rewarded with bonuses uh, for other considerations the players took. This is a bit of a moral challenge too. You're, you've been told, look, just keep them from going back. Taking a prisoner might not have even been brought up in the mission briefing. This is going to test the morality of your party. Are they just going to go on a 100% kill mission and, you know, just try and sneak up on this party, cut their throats in the night, and bring their helmets and weapons or something back as proof? Or would they say, no, 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 no. Soldiers are more useful if they're alive because we can ask them information. If that's the case, they're going to be going, uh, well, quite an extra mile. Or it, they're going to test their resources. Because suddenly, if base camp was, uh, right, here's like the capital city in Aslandia over here. If they had to, uh, if they had to go here and survive in the desert, which doesn't have a lot of, you know, berries or deer or other things... How are they going to then get back with three or four extra mouths to feed through hostile terrain and with hostile prisoners? At the same time, if they do, think of how impressed that commander is going to be and they and the party can earn extra rewards. However, if they just want to fulfill the command of go out and make sure that they don't say anything, you can do that as well. Uh, McCoolman, so what we're doing, over the course of the week, we have made five randomly generated characters. We made a map that you're seeing up here. We also made a dungeon and some other content. So on Saturday here, at the end of the week, uh, we, we combine it all into a campaign and present it to you in the audience as something you can run, as an inspiration for you, as a way to get you to think not just about the things that are in front of us like a um, uh, a player sheet, like a character sheet, but how can we plot out 10 levels of, of storyline? How can we make arcs and make compelling characters? Civil, what trouble is uh, IMOP causing transferring to a digital tabletop? Or, uh, not IMOP. <laughs> Lost Minds of Fandelver. Gotcha. So, I Ivalon, if, if you want to uh, open up the Civil Hermit, it, it seems like he might be willing to kind of give you a, a there, there, let's get through this. <laughs> kind of a, a, a rally. So, again, we have... Uh, we, we for sure are going to run a boss fight with several characters. And it'll be contained. Now, if you want to have some chance encounters in the desert, you could... But part of this is really meant to be survival getting out there, a big fight, and then just get back. Presumably in the dunes, unless you're throwing a purple worm at these characters or something, you know, something tunneling, uh, you would be able to see around you so bandits or whatnot might be visible. The main focus is on the fight. Can you stop this scouting party in some way? So you can, you can run this for an evil party, for a good party, for a mix, for a party of Imperial Sympathizers, Imperial Rebels, or Mesotopia, Mesotopian Natives. Oh, there you go. Uh, throw some, uh, yeah, uh, a, a bullet or a, a Thrykreen on kegs, too. And uh, Dark Wolf says there's a rust monster on, on there's a rust monster in Discord. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Chemisin, thank you again. 
You are definitely still stream boss, too. Chemison is sitting at the top. Oh, wow. Dark Wolf, you're, you're getting into the more monstrous side of things. It's uh, it's cool and kind of refreshing too. That I, I mean, I, not that I I, I mind your uh, your player characters, but it's fun seeing you branch out. So this is Dark Wolf's take on a uh, Rust monster. They look scary, but they're they're oh so gentle. They just wanna, they they wanna caress you here. They just wanna caress you with their feelers. Be like, it's cool, bro. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, it looks like also uh, Plague Doctor is up. Uh, I visited Plague Doctor Broadcasting. If you like creativity and music making, that's what he was focusing on. Um, so for sure, um, Plague Doctor is uh, is into that. He was uh, creating like a, his own loop for a song that he's been working on for a while. It was really cool to hear his process. Uh, so, but sure, as, as you see people, as you see those of us who are uh, sharing our broadcast, look, I won't be offended if you go in and pay people a visit, stop in and say hi or whatnot. Um, th we do this for us. You know, we're here to help each other out. All right, so congratulations. Uh, we've either, like, we, we did it minimally, we went out, we cut their throats in the night, and we, we came back. Or we brought back prisoners and we've really astounded our commanding officer. And now that we have proven that we can survive and we can skirmish, our company our company has been formed. Oh, it's the other way around for you, Dark Wolf. Cool. Yep, Chemison, uh, we will do that after we go through the campaign. So don't worry about that. Hang tight. Do you still have some time tonight, Chemison? Now we have been given official permission to go out and hunt Imperials on behalf of the Alliance. Dun, 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 dun. Congratulations! So we are level 10 and we're Outlands bound. We're now in Arc 2 of the campaign. To earn level 11, we need to reach the Mesotopian Alliance outpost, either along the western seacoast, the central plains past the desert, or around the bend of the eastern mountains. Or, in other words here, uh, we can go in the Central Plains and we could put it on the border and say, oh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's actually just up here and it's it's right in between the woods. Or if it's around the bend, it's, it's actually sitting, um, you know, it's around the bend and it's sitting here for some cover. Or we actually have to come up and we can put that maybe up all the way up here. This is going to allow the players to choose which area seems more fascinating for them. Do they want to take a seabound journey out? Right? If if they're still here in if they're still here in Aslandia, they can take the sea route out. They can continue traveling north, uh, kind of through familiar territory. Or they can take a longer, uh, longer trek. It's a little safer, but it is a, it's a lot longer. And they can go to the border here. You're allowing your players agency. They can make a choice. Ultimately, work needs done at all three locations. Uh, and so, Ivalon, um, uh, this this may set your heart at ease. Uh, I did consider, while I don't have a hex on the map. You can run traveling to either of these locations, well, either is two, to any of these locations as a hex crawl with various encounters, including the chance to encounter Imperial patrols, let alone region-appropriate threats and hazards. As well, this is a great chance to describe the countryside and make sure the players are invested in the mission, right? If they want to go out this way, then you can have seaside encounters, storms at sea, if they want to go this way, they can have desert and plains encounters as appropriate, especially as they get out of civilized society. And well, I mean, that's pretty close in Aslandia. You know, they go through here. 
think of the encounters you can run this way. Mountainous or like hilly or even forest encounters as they go through the little cops of trees here. This is this travel could take weeks or months of in-game time. It could even happen over several sessions, right? If if you're rolling on an encounter chart for an appropriate region, a battle could last half a session and the other half is continued travel. It's really up to you as the DM. Pace this out. If you're using milestones or EXP, pace it and bring flavor. Make this world come alive. Exploration of the unknown is a big part of this campaign. Everything should be presented as fresh, new, dangerous, wild, wonderful, and scary to the players. Ivalon, see Ivalon, you come in here, you're tired, you're like, oh, no more. And, and you're getting indulged by civil hermit. I'm, 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 I'm saying the word hex crawl and considering experience points. <laughs> I remember doing a good chunk of work at the start of uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, but then the opening events took several nights to progress. That meant I got to sit back and coast for a while. So hopefully you'll be able to look forward to that, Ivlon. Yeah, if you only do the first dungeon or two. Uh, your players might take some time to get through that, meaning you can space everything else out. Yep. Yep, Chemisin is on board. <clears throat> so, here, th now you've earned level 11 once you reach your destination. Because you've had some NPC encounters, maybe some monster encounters, you've encountered uh, going through a, we a weather event, such as a hazard, maybe a sandstorm, or a rock collapse, or something like that, a whirlpool at sea. You've earned that level because it has taken you months of travel time, and you've had to put in work to get to where you're going. So, we are out. We are in the Outlands. Congratulations. Mesotopia is behind us. We have earned our passage out here, and now we have to put in work to continue to build a name for our company. To earn level 12, they must report to the regional commander and complete two of four tasks in the nearby borderlands. These are generic because if they go to either of these locations, you can still do these do these tasks, okay? One, gather information, whether it's geographical, like complete a map or something, or uh, if there's any locals, ask the locals information. They can gather supplies or resources. They can scavenge for food and water. Or they can hunt for Imperials because there are most certainly going to be some about. You are continuing to give this group of mercenaries agency. You are allowing them to, to do what they think is the most strategic and what will cater to their, their strengths. That said, you're not just handing them a victory, and you'll see why. This is then going, if they have to complete two tasks, this could take several sessions. Uh, let's say that they're in the central plains. Well, maybe they have to go to the woods and gather some supplies there. And then they want to go talk to the locals and the locals actually live closer to the mountain here. And so they're gonna be going on two trips and this is gonna familiarize them with the locale that they've chosen. You could run them as encounters, as skill challenges. Uh, you could run it just as narrative if you want or social encounters. But congratulations, you've explored the land. You've completed two of the four tasks. To get to level 13, this commander says one more thing. You have to complete one of the other nearby missions. So maybe maybe the party said, oh, we're really good at these two. Let's do these. We're going to be more successful. That's fine. 
As a DM, take the long view. Take the long approach. Now they might have to do a mission of medium difficulty. They're, so they have to complete one more nearby mission of the two that remain. And then they get to choose one long distance slash ranging mission. They can intercept a supply caravan en route to a depot somewhere. They can explore a ruin or a mystery that was recently discovered to determine if anything useful is there or if the place would make a good base of operations. Because presumably this is kind of like a fort or, you know, it's it's just it, it's a place to bivouac for a while. Like a semi-permanent military outpost. Or three, find the regional leader and ask for diplomatic aid in repelling the Imperials. Each of these relies on different sets of talents and strengths. Now, they have to say, okay, well, let's say that we did the, uh, we scavenged and we gathered supplies. Because you, maybe you could do both at once. Oh, well, if we have to uh, hunt for Imperials, um, then this guy says, well, the caravan, the long distance is actually going to be up here. I'll make a little wagon, right? It's a rectangle in two circles. Isn't that beautiful? This is what you guys donate for. This quality. Are you seeing my glorious 4K caravan? This is refreshing at like 240 FPS. However, the Imperials that, uh, that are talking about in the short range mission are maybe in the woods over here. So they, they can't really combo. They're still going to be doing things uh, one way or the other. So maybe they're going to say, oh, let's let's get these Imperials here and then come up this way and then we'll return home or they'll just go the other direction. But they're still doing a short range mission and then they're going to a long range mission that they want to go on. If your players are excited because they're they're getting to pursue their own choices, that is going to keep interest in the game. That's going to keep excitement in the game, creative thinking in the game. And if things go wrong, you as a DM can say, look, you chose this. <laughs> Shh, I didn't say that. I did, but I didn't. It'll also prevent your players from going like this. Uh-huh. 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 Oh. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a storm at sea. I know what those look like. I'm, I'm good. Oh, it's my turn? Uh, shoot. Uh... What are we doing? Oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I got to roll something, <laughs> right? You're, you're keeping that interest. You're keeping that passion going. So congratulations. They've explored now not only uh, the local area around this uh, semi-permanent base, they've now went on a long-range mission, and they've come back, hopefully alive. So let's, let's roll this back here, okay? Now, to earn level 14, they need to complete one more long-distance mission of their choice. On the way back, we're going to test their metal with a surprise raid by Imperials in a battle of attrition that will test their battle and survival skills. So... You might, uh, hey, your party's like, oh yeah, we only have to do one more of these? Sure. Uh, we took out the caravan. Let's go find, let's find the regional leader and ask, uh, ask for diplomatic aid. So the, the diplomatic leader now might live in this central area close to the water. We'll put like a little, a tent or something. Right? I think on maps, a, a little tent with like the little sticks coming out the top. Oh, look, yeah, we, we just shoot the gap between the woods. Nice and easy. We get out here. Okay, so now we have a diplomatic skill session. On the way back, boom, battle. Big battle. Tough boss battle. Battle of attrition. These Imperials will not back down. Now, you could capture them still. What I'm meaning, though, is this is going to be an intense fight. Maybe the party falls into an ambush. So they're still doing two separate things. They're they're testing their charisma or their wits. And they're having to fight for their lives in this battle. Can they take prisoners? Probably. I would imagine so. Can they somehow worm out of the battle by disappearing or hiding or something? Maybe. Be open-minded as a DM. Reward creativity for your players. 
Especially if they're challenging themselves to maybe not want to have a lethal run. Or, I don't know, something along those lines. So here are the two events that are happening on this level. Two different things. Your players had complete agency in where to go. And coming back, you're going to challenge them, which is uh, hopefully is a compliment to them. There we go. Okay. They now come back, and they're battle-tested. They've went on two long-distance ranging missions, and they should have a familiarity with the local surroundings of this Outlands region. Congratulations, you're now level 14. We then get to travel back, akin to the Hex Crawl. Oh, I did it again, Nivalon. <gasps> But still my beating heart. I said hex crawl one more time. Travel back akin to the hex crawl with the newfound info or supplies or magical items. This will again test the morals of the party if they were told to turn in some pieces of tech or magical items and uh, if they lose it along the way, right? Bonus rewards for the things uh, that merely get past reporting back with a letter of approval by the regional command. This region, in, the, in our example... This region is cleared, mostly, right? We've, we've taken care of several Imperial uh, units. Uh, there might be some still in the area, but we've taken care of a lot of them, and we've also negotiated with the locals here to maybe keep patrols or to say, look, if you see people flying these colors, they're bad guys. Watch out. You have, you've, you've secured an area of the map, and that is, that's what we want to do again. Go back to what is the ultimate goal for the campaign. Congratulations, you've now trekked back. We'll do this kind of Indiana Jones style, right? Dun -da 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 -da, dun -da -da -da. And so here is here's our little fortress. Back in, safe and sound in Mesotopia. You can now see also as a DM, this allows you to advance time. What's happened in Mesotopia while everyone's been gone? Have there been more rumors? Have there been other invasions? Can you bait some hooks and cast them back out? Oh, you sure as heck can. All of this up here probably took weeks, more weeks or months of work to do, let alone traveling back to whatever the home base is. Now they return back to Mesotopia. Return back, that's redundant. I work in the Department of Redundancy Department. <laughs> And we can catch up with the world again. Maybe see loved ones. Maybe actually uh, spend their earnings on magic items and upgrades and things like that. And again, we can test their morals. If the if the regional commander up here at the base sent along a letter but said, "Oh wow, you liberated um, you liberated twenty uh, imperial swords and armor sets that we could use to disguise our own troops." Uh, or you found a magic item buried in the uh, in the ruins we sent you to find. Well, look, the commander down here might not know or expect it, or through magic he does, and he this is more of a test. Will your characters, will your player characters, as a DM, return that magic sword that was found for the good of the cause, or will they conveniently lose it? Or well, I'll use a plus one sword because we're fighting for the we're fighting the as the good guys. Well then, to earn level sixteen, having secured one region for now, they must choose one more for a bigger mission to push north in a more clandestine fashion. They must plant scrying beacons along the way to help watch out for enemy transports. The mission ends when they make contact with the government of that region and parlay with them. You feel like I'm pulling your leg, like I'm going to have some big reveal of some kind. <laughs> and yeah, I, I did see two different chemisons joined. I don't know if that was a, a hiccup or something, but hopefully you two can uh, uh, can work that out. All right, so congratulations. We secured, in this example, the Central Plains. Now let's say we uh, our party wants to come around and... Um, we have a sailor in the party, right? She's a privateer. She said, look, all of you landlubbers, I mean, she kind of is too. 
But I want to be back on the sea and close to the forests. That's what I'm good at doing. So here's our fort in Aslandia. And we're going to go... Dun, da, da, dun, da, dun, da, da, da. We have chosen this region here. And they might have to stop several times along, along the route to plant these beacons on the coast in order to look out for, uh, for Imperial ships. If that is the case, you could run random encounters every time they land or encounters at sea. Here's the base of operations and they can stop there, but that's not going to win them the level. The mission is not yet complete, right? The mission ends when they make contact with the government of that region and parlay with them. A Mesotopian outpost isn't the government of the region. That means that uh, this uh, voyage is going to have to continue. And if you go this way, there's actually two options. Uh, they, they might be kind of like cousin governments or something. But there is actually... Uh, if there is a, its own region and people up here... And there's its own region and people tucked in the mountains here. So the party can make a further decision. Do we want to go up to this anti-magic island? Or do we want to sail through this really weird and dangerous tunnel in order to land here? Or I guess you could go uh, far around, but you might want to stress as a DM, time is of the, uh, is of the uh, utmost importance because you are facing an invasion. Uh, is we have a magical party. Let's pretend that they didn't go to the anti-magic island and instead they went for this little nation tucked in the uh, in the crook of the mountains here on the sea. So they've made contact to parlay with the local government here. They've had practice over here, right? And now they've had a little adventure and they could have even stopped at the outpost. Oh, hey, I've heard of you guys. Yeah, you made a splash over there. Hopefully you can go along, hear some information, uh, move along now. And they land here, make contact, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. They have earned level 16. Aha. To earn level 17, they must solve the region's current calamity. What does that mean? Well. Uh, every region... Every region was given a calamity as well as a type of government. If they went... Uh, so this isn't the Northwest. They went to the... Um, they went to the Coastal Valley, okay? So here we have half-elves and humans that are living in harmony. There is a religious leader. The calamity is there's a plague or a famine that's sparking riots. So now that we're taking a slight break from the Imperials, right? They're out there, but we can't make progress until we can soothe the locals. We're, we're making sure that we're not tiring out this threat of the Imperials. And we're getting our party to think differently. Fighting famines or fighting germs or plagues is different than having a sword fight with an Imperial, with a, another sentient humanoid. And look, you can use these weird locales. You can work in the monuments, right? There's this great stone arch under which they sailed. There's some kind of a ruined or toppled ob obelisk. Maybe because the obelisk broke, that's when the bad stuff started happening and they have to restore it. As a DM, that's going to be up to you. But they're not... Uh, this simply says they must solve the region's current calamity. Do they have to make crops grow everywhere? Well, there's a druid who can help. But if they can offer a solution, even if it's to stop spraying uh, Brondo on the crops, even though Brondo has what plants crave, Brondo has electrolytes, uh, that is solving the calamity. And it could be done mentally, or it could be done physically, or magically, or through mundane feet, uh, or as a skill challenge even. But they have to help the locals. You are way far out in the Outlands. Help the locals to help you because you're on a long recon now. Now, they have to lo work with the locals' knowledge and trust to infiltrate or destroy a local Imperial base of operations. This will lead to assisting with the neighbor region's calamity. If there is an Imperial, uh, like, dock 
or something here, like a, a harbor. So this could be uh, th this could be causing some well some commotion around here. This ba this base of operations, it's not the major stronghold, but now with their knowledge, you'd have to come and infiltrate the docks over here, and if you can do so, um, you know to uh, infiltrate or destroy or seize uh, seize the base even. If, you're, if you have the ability to send message or messenger pigeons or something, wouldn't you love to be able to send a message back to this base camp? Yeah, send some ships around. We've secured a, we've secured a fully developed port. Or just say, yeah, you saw that explosion on the horizon? That was us. That was us. Congratulations, you're level 18. Now, to go to level 19, the players choose one last region, and in addition to the calamity it has... It is being actively occupied by Imperials. A large command base and power structure is seated in this region, but can only be brought down with the help from the locals. Reputations by now may precede them among non-Imperial residents of the Outlands, though maybe the Imperials too. You have to cure the Calamity. There are four regions. That means, okay, congratulations, you've liberated them from a minor Imperial permanent presence. Do you want to sail around and you're like, oh, I don't want to go to the anti-magic island. But we should because it's close and whatever. And so maybe the whole time, who would have thought that the Imperials had a base of operations on an anti-magic island? Well, it would sure make infiltrating it a lot harder, wouldn't it? <clears throat> or they can say, you know what? We're so close. Let's sail here. Right? We've already cured the, the woes here. We're going to get the help from these people that we've already helped. And we are actually going to come over, go through the mountains, and we are going to help this region over here because we like to use magic. <laughs> and so uh, this, is, this is their one last region. Again, your players have maximum agency. They'll sit down and discuss the pros and cons. They'll get excited. That said, you as a DM might want to be an arbitrator. Uh, an arbitrator. So you have learned that there's a big imperial base right over here, or somewhere in the region, right? Here, we'll give little fangs. Ooh, anything with fangs is evil. And it's in a square also. Ooh, that's... We'll put little horns. Boo, Imperial Base. Well, you've already solved one one people's calamities over here. You can help cure a calamity going on. Let's say that they choose to ignore the anti-magic island, and they come over here to the... Um, they come over here to the... Uh, what did I call... Oh, I minimized that. To the Untamed East. Their current calamity is an economic depression. Trade is disrupted. Aha! Maybe Imperials are disrupting trade? Or maybe it could be a conflict among the different uh, tribes. Or maybe, I don't know, uh, a rock, uh, rocks fell and it's blocking a trade path. One moment. I would suggest as a DM, don't double up the goals. If Imperials are causing the economic depression, um, look, bring flavor to your world. If you want to abbreviate it, you certainly can. I'm not going to tell you what to do as a DM. I'm going to offer you suggestions. But find a way to physically or mentally treat this economic depression. If you do so, then... Not only are you going to learn about this uh, big mega base, you're also going to obtain the help of the locals, because uh, you you have to have the locals help you, right? A large command base and power structure is seated in this region, but can only be brought down with the help of the locals. The locals can't help you if they're in this calamity. Now to earn level twenty, ah, ultimate power. Defeat the big bad evil guy in the base uh, after sacking the base. Now you are over here, right? You've um, we have the government that's over here. 
So you've actually come down and you've helped them. Yay! We're gonna put little like sunbeams coming off, and we're they're they're all smiley and they don't have fangs and horns. Now you're rallying the entire populace, or you know as many as you can muster in this region. Brothers and sisters, join me. We're gonna take down this big imperial base. We need your help. And the party is the leader of a group of hundreds or thousands even who are going to march up and they are going to try and uh, at least distract the Imperials to allow the party, the professional party, the level 19 party to infiltrate the base and take down the commander, cut the head off the snake or capture him. If you want to run a capture, he could probably be worth uh, quite the bounty back in Mesotopia and he probably has a lot of information. However, they want to resolve it now. Think of this. This is the end of the this is the end of your campaign. Your party has been around. They are regional powerhouses now. You're commanding hundreds or thousands of people to attack a base. So you as the DM, as you're describing them infiltrating the base, crawling through the air ducts or whatever, you have background music like this. There's there's uh, actually, you know what? We have uh not that one. Here we go. Now, instead of this little skirmish music of like a couple people fighting, you have a full on battle going. In the background, you can see torches or you can hear the shouts of, uh, of anger and of dying people, of Imperials and natives alike who are falling as, as, uh, as all of this is, is taking place. Or if you want to strategically lead them in some other way, yeah, do that too. Be open-minded as a DM. Um, yeah, mega evil, right, Lamington? <laughs> um, so congratulations. Uh, you know, the, the big bad evil guy is supposedly dead, or maybe he gets away, right? I'll get you next time! And he, he gets into an escape craft, or he has, like, an escape teleport, an emergency teleport room or something. You haven't seen the last of me. Well, you've taken over this big base. You've you've killed or driven off or captured the Imperial troops. Congratulations, you've earned level 20. Oh, but... Jobs get stuff at level 20. I, I'm sorry, not Jobs. I'm used to... Uh, I'm used to Final Fantasy. If we look at... Um, if you look at a class... At level 20, you get something fun. At 20th level for a bard, when you roll initiative and have no use as a bardic inspiration, you regain one use. If we look at a fighter, bubonic one, I'll throw you a bone. I know you really wanted a fighter this week. And I know that we've been rolling a lot of bards. Um, if, we, if you get here, you get an extra attack at level 20. Right? Extra attack, three. You can that that's big. You're swinging three times expertly. Well, if you just pop to level twenty with your players, they get these things that they can't really use. If you call the game right there, yeah, that's right, Chemison. <laughs> or or just think of like Doctor Claw from Inspector Gadget. Next time, Gadget. Next time, and then you get the cat. <laughs> so. Be the cool DM and, and give your players at least one chance to use their pretty shiny toys that they earn at, uh, at level 20. Druids can wild shape an unlimited number of times at level 20. Isn't that something? Um, so, you've earned level 20, congratulations, to earn eternal glory. Something that, that cannot be quantified in level. On your way back, you're randomly assaulted by the remaining squad that the BBEG could muster. So he's come back, and he's striking. And you know what? We kind of did something like that earlier. It's foreshadowing, or it was showing that this is the tactics of the Empire. Something along those lines. So it might make your players think about future campaigns. It's another, pro probably an unfair showdown in the Outlands with this general. The weather, the terrain, and the odds will most likely be against the party. If they don't win, this shamed and maddened general may do horrible things until he's snuffed out or captured otherwise. 
So the party could just walk away and ignore him. They could just teleport back and say, we did it, yay, don't worry about anything out in the Outlands. Uh, surely he can't survive a trek through the desert, despite surviving the castle blowing up or whatever happened. So, do they have to kill him? No. Look, these are level 20 characters. They can just teleport back if they really want to and say, we're done. Uh, give us praise. Or, they can make sure that they're coming back with a body, alive or dead. And so they're going to get ambushed and it's going to be, it's going to feel like a one-sided battle, but you know what? These are the big damn heroes at level 20. They have fought and struggled since level eight to get this far. They have traveled thousands of miles through hostile terrain, dealing with natives that are either hostile, ignorant, or, uh, or they just, or, or cowardly or something. They've made a name for themselves completely outside of Mesotopia. This is their chance, and you as a DM can offer them. This is your level 20 battle. The big, the big bad guy, he healed himself up. He grabbed his, uh, his special armor, and he's waiting until midnight in the middle of a storm on uneven ground to attack you, and he's going to savage you. Use everything you've learned, all of your wits, your wisdom, your resources, your contacts, everything, in order to get through this battle. And you will have won at that point. Yeah, we're blasting off again! Bing! <laughs> so, what do you all think of this as a campaign idea? Did this inspire you? Uh, did this help you feel a little bit more confident as a DM? Did this uh, give you uh, ideas of some kind? Have you experienced something like this before? Is this a methodology that perhaps you've never thought about as a DM? You know, we made an outdoor dungeon earlier, and many of these missions can be run as an outdoor dungeon. Think of, and, and, and again, th these are missions given to this group of players. It's completely flexible whether they're an evil party or a good party, whether they're moral in it or immoral. Um, and it ties everything, it ties Mesotopia, it is a link into this Shadahar Empire, it re it shows a little bit more ankle, oh my, how lewd, it shows a little bit more ankle of the Empire, and it can bleed into so many other adventures to come. Lamington, Rad, I love world building, but I'm struggling with my own continuity, but the outlines are helping you, I'm really glad, Lamington, and I will make sure, I'll put this on our Discord, so if you want to download it and use it for reference, you're welcome to do so. And we'll put the map back to normal. So you can place whatever you want, wherever you want. Um, so yeah, uh, Lamington, uh, if, if you have particular troubles or questions, myself and others here could probably help you bust through those roadblocks or those writer's blocks. <laughs> Infinite, hey, no, 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 don't worry about it. Uh, Infinite, we are actually, uh, I finished up the segment that I wanted to for part two. We just discussed the campaign and we will begin part three. And uh, I promised you that we will sit down and build that sorcerer figure that you had in mind. And Chemison, if you want to build a figure tonight too, or a figure, if you want to build a character tonight also, we can sit down and do that, okay? Uh, so I'm going to get all this saved. I'm going to take a five to ten minute break. I'm going to drink some more water. I'm going to, it's, it's still a little warm. Um, I'm going to drink some ice cold water. I'm going to cool off and I'm going to put these things up, Lawmington and others. If you see where it says uh, da -da 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 -da, past content, I'll upload it here for you if you want to reference anything. Also, oh, Derek is sharing some uh, some safer work pics and memes. Murder hobos. Listen and understand. The PCs are out there. They can't be bargained with. They can't be reasoned with. They don't feel pity or remorse or fear. And they absolutely will not stop ever until everyone in the dungeon is dead. <clears throat> and throw the halfling. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I 
Oh, and that uh, Ivalon that happened with a crit on the attack? That's funny. All right. So I'm going to go I'm gonna go to my uh, AFK screen five or ten minutes, and I'll be back. And it's free play time. Yay. Infinite will make a character. And, uh, Kez and uh, Chemisen, if you want a character after that also, I will sit down and help make one with you. Technotron, hello, hello. Ha, 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 ha. 